Hi everyone, I'm Ashley, Education Developer here at Blick Art Materials, and we're super excited to bring you this very special gouache painted winter scene demo. We're going to be using Windsor & Newton traditional gouache on an Arsh 300 pound watercolor block. We're going to be painting from a reference image uh, that you see here, and we're going to be pairing that with Windsor & Newton Cotman watercolor brushes uh, to make this scene really happen. Um, so uh, I want to remind everyone before we get started that there is an opportunity to win a $100 Blick E gift card, and you can be eligible to win by simply liking this post, following our page, and commenting in the chat and responding to our prompt in the dialogue. Um, let us know your thoughts and you will be eligible to win that $100 gift card. In addition, be sure to check out our bundle page while you're watching our live stream. You'll find all the products that we're using here today and you'll also find this bonus reference image uh, that you can print at your leisure so that you can follow along here this evening or you can play this video back at any time and paint a gouache winter scene of your own. So I'm just going to set that here for now. I'm excited to get started, so let's go ahead and jump in to this painting. I'm using a limited color palette, so I just want to introduce you to the colors that we're going to be using. Uh, because we have these incredibly bright, vibrant blues, I have a couple different blues, um, ultramarine and primary. Uh, we're also going to be using green, burnt umber, and white. And this is a limited color palette that's going to help reduce any muddiness that happens when you have red, yellow, and blue in the same color palette. Uh, and when we build those colors up, layer after layer, we're going to get a really nice, clean, cool uh, effect. And um, it's going to uh, be nice and crisp in the end. So that's really what we're going for. Uh, let's see, so I'm using a glass palette here today. Of course, you can use a well palette or whatever you're most comfortable with. I like the glass palette because it's reusable and I don't need a ton of water when I'm working with gouache. So I'm going to start with the gradient background that we see in our reference image. And when I mean gradient, or what I mean when I say gradient, is that we're starting uh, with a dark, color uh, at the top of our work surface and we're working our way toward a lighter color without stopping. So all on one surface working from dark to light and that's going to establish our uh, sky and the snow on the bottom all in one. So let's get started. I'm going to take a little bit of this ultramarine blue to start and this is going to be that deep bright uh, blue color that we see there. As we work our way into lighter colors, we're going to be adding in this primary blue. And then because we're working our way down to white, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of white to my palette as well. And as we work our way down, we'll work from left to right on our palette. So gouache is activated by water. Uh, it actually has the same binder as watercolor, which is gum arabic, and that's water soluble. But gouache is pigment loaded. So it has way more pigment than watercolor, uh, which is meant to be applied in transparent layers, as opposed to gouache, which really goes down in opaque layers. And opaque just means you can't see through it. All right, so because we're covering a large surface area, we want to start with our largest brush. So I'm going to use my largest brush. This is a three quarter inch flat. So when you're doing these large washes, you can just really get that broad stroke in. Now this is kind of my favorite part because you're not worried about really what this painting is going to look like in the end. You're just slapping the paint down on the paper and it just feels good. So. Go with that feeling and really um, get that paint loaded up on there. Now eventually our colors are going to kind of flow together and that's completely fine. They don't need to be separate. Oftentimes that can really help to unify a palette. 
So I'm just going to start working in my paint. And as I go, if I need more water, I'm using a pipette. And the reason I use the pipette is that I don't have to constantly dip my brush back in that water to get more paint. Okay. Combining these colors is also going to help you achieve that opacity that gouache is really known for. So the more I create harmony with these colors, the nicer they're really going to go down. And you kind of determine while you're doing this, and be careful if you, if you flick, because the paint will go flying from side to side. So just be mindful of that. Um, so you, you're going to want to kind of decide where uh, on the block in this gradient you're going to start to transition into lighter colors. I like to kind of take that as it comes and um, at some point uh, all of the colors will be working together. So make sure that you're heavy on the dark color at the top and then almost no matter what as you move subsequently down to those lighter colors you'll start to get that gradient that you want and it will be very striking. So let's work through this. All right. I'm going to show you what happens when we start to bring white into the equation. Now, just like with your acrylic painting and your oil painting, white is going to be incredibly important with gouache. When you're painting with watercolors, uh, you rarely use white as uh, it's more traditional to leave your paper white where you want that highlight. However, with gouache, you want to use that white to your advantage. So I'm just going to start adding in little by little while continuing to blend the layers that are above it that's going to give you a really nice smooth outcome. Let's get a little more water and again see my colors because I'm using a limited color palette these colors can go together without getting muddy. It makes my palette really easy to deal with. Now you can use a bigger brush than the one that I'm using. You could use a one inch flat if you have that already hanging out. But I will tell you that the brushes we're using today are quite essential. So if you're looking for a good set of starter brushes, I think this could be a great way to go. You've got the large flat wash for those big areas. Then you've got an angle shader and a round brush. We're going to be going over those that have slightly different uses. All right, we're getting close. Let's start to lay in heavy white on the bottom. The bottom third, really. Make our gradient a little more dramatic as we go. Now we're using a 300 pound paper and that means uh, that it's a heavyweight paper. There's more paper for our water to absorb into. So it's incredibly sturdy and when I'm using these heavy washes and many layers of paint, it's incredibly helpful to have a thick paper uh, that you're working on. Let's keep getting more bright white down here at the bottom. Almost there. And this really establishes your tonal background. So if you are familiar with traditional acrylic and oil painting, 
And maybe you're one of those folks who likes to tone their background. This takes a page out of that book. And it gives us something to build on. Because we are dealing with an image that has a lot of details, if you overthink it, but can easily go against a background and make that whole observation process much easier for you. Okay, so this is a great start. Now, I like to do two coats. I think we can get one more coat on here, and then we're going to move on to the next step. But this coat is going to be extremely quick because we've already got so much built up. I'll just clean a little bit. So here, in this second layer, and it's not 100% necessary that you go for layer number two, but I like the way it looks, you'll notice that your gouache gets even more forgiving. So where before you were getting it down on the paper and it would stick a little bit and you load up and you're loading up that paint, this layer, you're just gonna glide that paint right on and it feels good. So let's get this down quickly. And it smooths out anything that might have been kind of sticky looking before. So, if you work transparent and you wanted to put down a transparent layer, then you would be using your gouache more like a watercolor because, again, it's that same binder, right? So, um, you can use your gouache uh, both ways. You can use it as a transparent watercolor here as well as that opaque full coverage paint that gouache is so well known for. All right, and this is my last little bit. Try and get that white as bright as possible on the bottom, but it doesn't have to be white right out of the tube. I like this kind of sky blue, snowy white where you can really tell that the sky is reflecting on the snow, making that happen. So almost just like an oil paint, it becomes so smooth and buttery and easy to use, and it's so much fun uh, just doing that. So, but we're going to move on to our next step. So uh, remember, you want this step to dry. You can take a blow dryer, you can quick dry it, a couple minutes, that's completely fine. Hold it six inches at least away from your surface, give it a quick blow dry, or just let it rest flat for couple moments, uh, uh, maybe 20, 25 minutes, uh, something like that. Make sure it's totally dry to the touch and then you can move on to that next step. I worked ahead for us so that we can do just that. So I'll set this to the side here and I'm going to take one gradient that's already dry. So we're still working on this 300 pound watercolor block and it's holding up so nicely. So the next thing that we want to do uh, is we want to continue to observe our reference image for some of these details that we're going to pull out. And uh, usually we start with a sketch on white paper, right? Uh, but this time we're starting with this blue background. So a couple of uh, helpful tips if you're going to uh, uh, institute this sketch uh, after we've got our gradient placed. So what we want to do is we want to look at where we see individual trees occur. That's going to help us to establish those trees in space. And in addition, we want to establish this snow line that's kind of acting as our horizon line. Um, not necessarily our sky, it's a, less, uh, a little less clear here. But down here, we're going to uh, set that line straight. Uh, and then we're going to use that very simple sketch as a guide for painting in the branches and the snowbank. So let's get started. Now I'm excited to show you this quick drawing tip because I think it will really help you if you're a beginner or if you've been doing this for a while and maybe you've never heard this before. But when I am drawing, particularly uh, when I'm drawing uh, these edge lines or things where I need to establish an angle, 
I like to take my pencil. This is a 2B. It's a little bit softer and it's going to show up a little bit darker for us here. It's okay to have a dark pencil line because that gouache is going to totally cover it up as opposed to your watercolor, right? So I take my pencil and uh, I have my reference image standing up. All right, for the most part. Um, so if I need to find an angle, I'm going to take my pencil with the blunt side up and I'm going to aim it at my object. Now, if I want an angle, I'm going to match this pencil up with that angle. Okay, so I've got an angle here, slightly like this, slightly like this, slightly like that. Maybe you need to squint with one eye, but it makes it incredibly easy to nail those, uh, those sharp lines. So, if I'm measuring, I can also look at my uh, tree and I can measure the size of that tree line. So coming back to my pencil, I'm going to hold my pencil up to the tree and I'm just going to measure it. Okay, that's about how big, maybe we'll go here, if you can see. You want to hold it straight um, to that object, measure it. That way when I go here, I have an approximate uh, size of that object. I hope that was easy to understand. All right, so let's make a quick sketch. Now I've observed this uh, image many times, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, establish this horizon line. And this is just the snow bank, and it's just a sketch. Okay, so don't put too much pressure on yourself. It just gives us a space to work in. And then right on top of there, I also noticed that my uh, first tree is slightly off center. So here's the center of my page. Here's where my first tree goes. I know it's about this big. Okay, working that way, let's get our sketch built in here. And it's just quick. Maybe some of your trees have a slight curve. You can capture that. Make sure that these big trees get that height established. And this drawing may be hard to see on camera, so I'm going to work quickly here so that you don't have to uh, lose visibility. But uh, just a couple more trees and some that kind of fade into the background. All right. Now, don't forget your edge trees, okay? So let's just build in, and this is a, just a, a literal line drawing, no detail, but I'm drawing in these branches that might go in a couple different directions. It's just a simple line. No more than that is needed now, and I'll show you why shortly. So let's work in branches for all of our trees. I'm gonna work quickly. Now, if you don't get all the branches worked in at this step, you can go back in and layer by layer, excuse me, uh, layer by layer, you will be adding in your branches. So, of course, you want to continue to observe. Some of these branches are going to come way down. So just make sure you get that variety. You know, if you're trying to determine an angle of some of these branches. Remember, hold that pencil out and then move it at an angle and then butt that right up against your paper. Just a quick drawing tip. Has saved me many times. All right. Now, you have some trees that have less branches than others. By establishing some of those things, uh, it's going to help you to uh, start to uh, gain a perspective for this piece. So the variation in the branches, uh, what angle they're going, how long they are, really can easily be represented by a quick line that we're going to be building off of. And of course these are overlapping. So it's like, how do we uh, untangle the nettles of these pine trees um, to uh, make it look nice and clean like that? 
but we will see. And don't forget, some of your branches come forward, right? So draw some of your lines coming forward, and that's going to help you to build some perspective as well. And don't forget the edges where these trees come in from the side. All right, so quick sketching lesson for everybody. Hope we all enjoyed that, I know I did. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to establish the snowy ground and the branches on the trees. So to do that, uh, I actually think I'm going to start with this white and build in a little bit of snow just to um, be able to see a little bit better what we're working in here, but also I have a little bit of white left on my palette. So you can see the drawing a little bit better. So Julie just asked me to uh, pick up the block and move it around so we could see the drawing a little bit better. I think that's a great idea. So uh, let me know if uh, the light is hitting it. That's better. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Excellent. All right. So let's keep working kind of quickly here. Um, I'm going to move into uh, using this 3 8 inch angle shader, this Cotman brush, and that's going to get me through the next couple of steps here. So I'm just going to take some of this white, because I still have it, I'm going to load it up, and just a transparent layer is going to get us where we need to go, because again, we're just going to um, establish that ground, it looks like I need a little more. We're just going to quickly establish that ground and then we're going to uh, paint a highlight layer over top of that. So it doesn't have to be perfect. This is still your painting sketch in a way. And it has a little bit of that blue in the background. All right. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because we want a little bit of shading to happen and we want this to dry quickly so that we don't get muddy. But now we're starting to see a little bit more that we're stepping into a wintry scene. All right, let's get the brush clean. I'm going to um, start uh, uh, painting in these branches. And to do that, we're going to make a special evergreen color. And I really like this color mixture because one, it's incredibly easy uh, to remember. Um, it focuses on that limited color palette. And we just don't have to work too hard uh, to match it consistently every single time. So I'm just going to use my permanent green with a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And this might be the perfect ratio. Maybe I need to add more green, maybe more blue. You can tweak the color formula to be as dark or bright as you would like it to be. And I'm just going to mix these right together. with a little bit of water. And with gouache, you don't want to use it right out of the tube. It's going to be really sticky when you go put that to the paper. Add enough water to where when you're applying it, it glides on your surface. And that's really what we're looking for. So this is a really nice, rich green that we've got going here. It's not super dark or brown, but it's just a cut above that, um, that green uh, medium, right? All right, so the other thing is, I don't want to have too much gouache loaded up on my brush. Um, I want to just give it a, tuple, a couple of taps. Uh, you can't see my paper towel over here, but I'm just dabbing the uh, edge of the brush lightly on the paper towel so that it doesn't all come flowing out at once. 
All right, now, because this is an angle shader, it has a nice blade edge, and we're gonna use that to make some quick branches and lines in here. Okay, we've got them going in different ways. And this is why we just wanna keep that sketch so super simple. because we're just using it to build on. It's not the main course just yet. Just use the edge. And my hand's a little <laughs> wobbly, as you can see, but that's okay. This isn't perfect. Um, in fact, nature uh, is hardly ever in straight lines. Um, what I really enjoy about painting from observation, like we're doing here today, or maybe you're out in the field and you're painting in plein air, um, really, you know, uh, those oddities of nature, like the branches going in different directions, are what make your painting believable, even if it doesn't look hyper-realistic. Um, so it's not necessarily that realism that we're after, it's the, the feeling. Now, this is just one layer of branches, right? So um, you're going to want probably several layers. I'll try and hold my arm and get a little more steady there. Um, so once you get in this first layer, as we'll see in our next step, uh, you're going to keep building these in using the same process over and over even after you get uh, that snow established on the branches. If you have a wobbly hand like I do, a wobbly arm, a lot of painters will use a mall stick. Um, it, for me, I'm just using my arm to rest up against. Um, but that gives you something to brace against so that you don't go wobbling all over the place if you don't want to. If you're working on larger paintings, that mall stick can be extremely useful or your arm, whatever you have handy. All right. Don't forget your side branches. Okay, step number one, or two or three, is now done. Step number one of the trees is now done. So, um, this is a great start. Now, I'm going to show you the next step. We're gonna get some boughs on these branches. I'm gonna move to my round brush, and this is a round number four. I'm gonna use this same mixture of paint. And this is a mark making process. So follow along, it's incredibly simple. Uh, and I think you'll get a kick out of it, quite honestly, uh, because it is just kind of fun. So on all these branches that you just painted, maybe you need to hold your arm. We're going to paint these bow branches. I'll show you uh, this mark that we're going to make on all of these branches. It's going to be large at the bottom and taper smaller toward the end. So, just gonna make this kind of zigzaggy bow branch. And then one stroke, right? Now do another one. Large to small, just like that. Yeah. 
You might be hearing our train in the background. That makes me think of the Polar Express. All right. Now, keep doing this until you have your branches worked in. It's an incredibly easy mark to make. You want your gouache, like we talked about before, to glide right on your paper. So I have enough water where it's not sticking, but it's not necessarily transparent either. And it just glides and covers, okay? Let's do a couple more and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, just so we get the feel. Even up on the top ones here. Okay, now you can slightly start to see what we're working toward. So good news, uh, I've worked ahead for us a little bit and uh, we're going to move right into the next step of once we've got most of these branches established. Now let's take a look at that. All right, we're still working on the 300 pound watercolor block. Now you can see with time You've worked these in, and now they're really starting to look like branches. I mean, how easy was that? Um, <laughs> and and uh, the coverage is great. So at this point, I might have a couple little that I maybe left out, and then we're going to get started painting snow on these branches. And I'm really excited for that. So because this layer is dry, it's ideal for going back in and working over top of it, okay? So just keep that in mind. When you're ready to move on to your white, that you want that layer underneath to be dry, okay? Or else it's gonna get muddy for you. All right, clean that brush. Put that angle shader away for now. Good news is with gouache, you can easily clean everything with a little bit of water. Um, very minimal materials required for cleaning. Okay, now we're gonna keep in stride. We're gonna continue to use the round four, but let's go for that stark white snow. So I'm going to add more white and trying to save space on my palette in case I start to move down here naturally anyway. And I really want this to be as stark white as possible. So actually, let's move it down here. I think I've got a palette knife. You can use a palette knife with gouache. Let's just move it. You can save space, but you can also, if you have enough room, might as well use it. I can change my mind. All right. Now let's add that water back in just a little bit. Okay. Now let's get that moving. Now be careful you don't have old gouache in your paintbrush because that can turn your snow white into a mint green very easily. And I want to make sure I don't have too much water. So let me just get this last bit kind of blended in. Make sure that your gouache is totally blended with your water. Uh, if not, you will get a pretty inconsistent application and you really want it to flow and glide. That's the key to your gouache painting, uh, I think, is getting it just to the right consistency where it's like a heavy cream and it just wants to flow right from your brush onto the paper. Now, we're basically going to use the same mark making process to paint the snow onto our branches. So remember that, uh, the boughs that we painted, and we're gonna work over top of the dry branches here. I don't want too, too much gouache. Again, if you have too much gouache, just tap it on your paper towel if you need to. 
And let's just start up here. Maybe you need to steady your arm and then let's just Okay, it's just gonna go just like that. A little bit of that negative space is completely fine. It adds in a little bit of texture. And every single branch is touched, right? We've got a lot of snow. I imagine this picture must have been taken in Sweden or a place where they get so much snow. Uh, there must be all kinds of wildlife and I like to think about nature and paint from nature. Maybe you do too. There's a lot of inspiration there for us. Just this gentle um, application of snow on the boughs. Let's keep working for a little while because it does take time. And I like seeing the trees really come to life. I'm gonna skip around a little bit so that we can see better our snowy scenes start to happen. So you can see that this gouache is going on opaque, perfectly white and opaque. Maybe you want to add more uh, in another layer to get it even more um, uh, perfect, perfectly white. And that's totally up to you. Now, if you're watching us from home or on your mobile, don't forget, we are doing a $100 Blick e-gift card giveaway, and the winner will be announced at the end of this demo. All you have to do to be eligible is like this post, and like our page, and follow Blick on Facebook, and leave us a comment in the chat and respond to our prompt uh, in the dialogue because we'd love to know your thoughts. And uh, you could be eligible to win that gift card. But also, as a bonus, it's totally free to go to our bundle page and check out all the supplies that we're using here today, but also get this free printable reference image uh, that you can use to make your own gouache painted winter scene. And how beautiful will that be with your new frame from Blick uh, that you can display on your mantle by your bedside or what have you. All right, now you can see it'll take a little time Maybe we don't have time for all the branches, but I'll get enough on here so that we can move on to our next step and then you can take it from there. Painters at home. Now the gouache that we're using here is a traditional artist gouache as opposed to an acrylic gouache. Uh, so if you're an acrylic lover, uh, or even if you're not. Acrylic gouache uh, is very satisfying, but is also very different. So here, with the gouache that we're painting in layers, we're being very careful to mind the drying times. The reason we're minding the drying times is because when we paint our next layer, we could disturb the layers underneath if we're not careful. So, we don't want to pull up any extra paint. If you were using acrylic gouache, 
you may worry less about building up layers because uh, it does act more like an acrylic. Each layer is sealed. However, you may not get some of that uh, glorious, almost oil paint-like um, uh, thing that happens when you're painting with gouache that makes it um, so buttery. Uh, it, it, the acrylic gouache is a different uh, kind of paint. So if I were you, I would try both. And I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't try to only focus on one medium. I would try to test out as many mediums as I could. And this is a perfect time to do that. OK. Now that we know the mark making process to make our trees, we can go back in and uh, once we have this first layer established, we can build more and more branches. So what you'll do is you'll take your green and you might go somewhere where the paint's already dry. And I'm just gonna show you quickly. And you might go boop and add in another branch. You'll boop it. <laughs> um, and you'll be okay. And then look, we've got a layer starting to happen there. I know that's subtle. Let me do another one for you here. And we can do this all with the round brush. But let's see, we want to boop. Okay, that is what's going to create depth in this painting. Building over these layers because all of a sudden, this branch is behind the one that we just painted, right? So the more you do that, the more you build out these big, fluffy uh, evergreens. And we picked up a little white. That's why we want it to be dry, but just for the demo here. So now you can see um, how you can start to build in some of that depth. Okay, now I just want to show you one last step in the process because we're going to leave it up to you to take it from here. So the last thing that we're going to want to do on our painting, and then I'll go back to painting in these trees once we've explained that. Um, we are going to go back to the white, and we're going to focus on light and shadow. All right, so to do that, we're gonna have this bright white, and then we also have these blues still left over. We still have paint. It's not a lot of paint, but it's just enough. And that's what's so economical about gouache. Uh, you never have to toss any. Uh, it stays there for you, and um, it can be uh, an incredibly uh, resourceful practice. So. Try and get your brush as clean as possible. That's what I'm doing here now. And I'm wiping it off on this paper towel to make sure that I get those green bits. Now, let's get that white going and make these bright whites. Okay. So if I'm looking at my image, I wanna see where the bright, bright whites are occurring. And kind of um, up here where it's like closer to the light, that's where we see those really bright whites. And we're just going to make marks that look like these snowy mounds, right? I'm using the angle shader because it's easy to have it go different directions and make these kind of solid shapes. I'm just building in a texture. I'm not drawing each individual mound of snow. I just want to get the feeling of the snow. And you'll also notice when you observe this reference image, let's just look at it quickly. Notice these shadows. These are blue shadows, right? So they're not black and they're not um, scary. They're a, a lovely uh, a dark blue. And we're just going to work in some of that shadow. So let's. Um, and then in addition, we have these bright white snow mounds. Okay, that's what I was talking about before, where you have the bright whites. OK, 
Okay. And just work quickly. Get that down. Now maybe you're happy with two layers. Maybe you're happy with one. Maybe you're happy with four or three. Uh, really, I feel like, um, you know, two layers builds a really solid ground with texture. Yes, you can use the gouache to lay down one flat layer of color, but look at this lovely texture um, that, that is really starting to feel like snow. So now that I've got that down, I'm just going to build in and just, um, just a little little bit of the shadow. Okay, and then blend. And look how smoothly on this 300 pound watercolor paper we're getting this paint to blend. Right? And it may be interacting with that bottom layer, but here anything goes because these colors are all working together in that limited color palette that we discussed when we started. Now let's get just a little bit of shadow worked in here. And now it's starting to look a lot more like that ground. Okay. All right. Excellent. Now, if you're watching at home and we've gotten this far, I really hope that you enjoy this blending ability uh, that the gouache has as you get these layers built up. Knowing when and how to use uh, the gouache dry and wet is really going to be your friend in this process. Now, I know I'm going to keep working until this painting is done so that when it's all finished, I have that nice heavy layering perspective and horizon line established like I have in this painting here. So I'm gonna keep working, but I hope that you join us again on our next Facebook Live and um, we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you for joining us.